Boom, boom. Mike is hot, and the New York Jets are hot. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird saying? I don't know. Did you get a chance to watch that game, that Jets-Packers game? Yeah, I did. It's me yeah, too. It's, it is me. a strange thing to sit here and think about <laughs> the Jets are on fire. <laughs> J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Yeah. That's what's on the mind of Broncos country right now. Good evening, everybody. Luke Patterson here from MHI. Mile High Insiders joined with me by my friend. Thomas Hall, you can get at Thomas at Thomas Hall NFL and Tom pinch hitting man back to back <laughs> two shows in a row building the Broncos great show with Carl last night I noticed your hoodie uh, doing yeah. some campaigning and I think you actually officially started that campaign on this show why don't you tell the crowd about the the campaign and the hoodie you wore last night on BTV oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. It's been fun. Uh, yeah, so Tom Nalen for the Hall of Fame. I am a big supporter of getting him in the Hall of Fame. He's one of the greatest centers of all time, in my opinion. I've done a lot of research on him. So this the hoodie is really to raise money for Tom Nalen's candidacy, you know, because we got to get their awareness out there. So half of it actually goes to St. Jude. The other half wow. is... Uh, kind of you know getting some uh cash out there to support his his candidacy so that's what it's all about it's a nice hoodie uh i like it yeah. it's warm it's fall time it of looks, year it's great yeah it looks good man and you know like not to bore the audience or anything here but look this is all we have is our old broncos of of yesteryear if you will if you will i mean i think i saw an announcement today saying that uh, Broncos championship team is going to be celebrated in week seven or week eight uh not quite sure which one but i'm thinking man what a crappy celebration that's going to be with this losing, dysfunctional Broncos team. This is coming from the same guy who has picked the Broncos to win the past two weeks. I've been wrong. Um, the Chargers game was absolutely disgusting. Uh, I think this team is starting to crumble a little bit, not only on the field, but off the field. There are so many different members of Broncos country that are frustrated. They're checked out. And it's hard to get any sort of positivity when you talk about the Denver Broncos, at least here in the Mile High City, Tom. Um, just going through the Charger game a little bit, what are your general feelings now a few days removed from Monday Night Football and a disastrous finish in L.A.? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm with you, man. I've been I'm I have a lot of optimism. And, and I think that what I said last night, too, is it hurts so much because they, we were expecting so much more. Um, trying to look on the bright side, you know, there was some positives from that Chargers game, uh, but uh, not enough positives to get everybody back on board. That's for sure. So the defense, uh, you got to give that, give it to them. They're still playing tough, but if the offense continues to let them down, you're going to see them kind of stop playing as hard as my guess. I may be wrong <laughs> on that because they've got a lot of pride and, you know, they're, but yeah, the Chargers do they, game was bad. Do they, have a, do they have a lot of pride? Because I see a lot of arrogance on this team, if I'm being completely honest. And obviously there's a fine line between pride and arrogance, but I see a lot of punks on this football team, Tom, and it takes one to know one. I've been called a punk myself. And <laughs> Kathy Lund coming in here real quick. Good evening, Broncos fam. What's the mood elevator prior to facing the Jets? Worried. I think the Broncos are actually a favorite right now. I could be mistaken. I don't know why. This is a Jets team that is very well disciplined, especially on the defensive side of the ball. You've got Zach Wilson and the offense clicking. I know it was just one week. Any given Sunday, you can win or lose. And uh, look, the Jets are no joke anymore. And the Broncos are the laughing stock of the NFL. That's what we are talking about tonight here on MHI. Thank you for joining us, Kathy. And thank you guys for joining us here on MHI. I am Luke Patterson. Join with me. Um, this week and back to back is Thomas Hall. You saw him last night in building the Broncos, getting that candidacy out there for Tom Nalen to the Hall of Fame. And we got to talk about a big one subject to the show today. A disgruntled Denver running back is on the tip of everyone's tongue. Melvin Gordon got named the starter today. I was shocked. I was disappointed. I've been anti Melvin Gordon for the last two years and for whatever reason, this guy continues to get a pass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, Michaela, uh, good to see you coming in. Good evening, Broncos country. Appreciate you coming in there. I, I agree. The, the problem that I have with, so I guess I don't have a problem if 
with them talking it out, deciding on a plan. And, you know, he, he started in the game anyway, you know, but he just didn't play that much. But so I don't have the problem with it. My biggest problem with this whole Melvin Gordon thing is Hackett's indecisiveness. And a good leader, I don't care if you're from, you know, East Samurai culture, business culture of the West, that is a one of the biggest virtues or effectiveness of being a leader is being able to be decisive. And when Melvin Gordon fumbled for that second time, that's when Hackett should have stepped in and said, okay, you're going to be in the bench for a while. But he just let it linger. He didn't do, he just kept letting Melvin Gordon keep playing, fumbling a couple more times, costing the game. And then when he finally does make the decision way too late, he should have made it way earlier. He has now gone back on his decision. So he benched Gordon essentially in that game. And now he's gone back. And, and that's not a sign of a good leader. I mean, a good leader will really stick to what their decision is and move forward unless there's something major that happens. And I don't see that happening with Hackett. And that's this is a prime example of it. Can Nathaniel hack it out the rest of the season? Time is going to tell. Dylan Von Arks, one of our own, coming in here saying Thomas has been putting in that work. Thomas certainly has, man, and and we love him every time we get him on the show. But Dylan has been putting in that work as well. Be sure to head on over to milehighhuddle.com where you can check out Dylan Von Arks's lately weekly or lately weekly power ranking article. Again, that's milehighhuddle.com for Dylan's weekly. Uh, power ranking article and don't expect to see the Broncos anywhere up high on those power <laughs> rankings because things are abysmal and Phil McLaughlin coming in here kind of weighing off real quick saying good evening Tom Luke and the Deacon Scott why in the hell does Nathaniel Hackett announce Melvin as the number one back he should be gone hashtag go Broncos uh, MHH for life thank you so much for the big support Phil we really really appreciate it I don't have an answer for this other than He's a player coach. Uh, he's he's going to go down with that chip, I suppose. Um, but I do find it ironic that I think Nathaniel Hackett is a lot more similar to Vic Fangio than we may want to admit. And he doesn't want to admit when he's wrong. He doesn't want to alter or change the plan. Uh, now, look, I think the only real difference between those guys is Nathaniel Hackett's, quote, a nice guy. Well, I don't need a nice guy. I need a coach that can handle and lead this team. And I suppose it can be hard to do with a, a franchise quarterback like Russell Wilson that seems right now a little more invested in his brand than football. And I know, I know, I know, hamstring, shoulder, all that sort of stuff. He's day-to-day. -day. We're going to see. But no excuses. This is a bad football team, Tom. And Melvin Gordon sounded off after the Chargers lost the other day. And, Phil, I'm sure you caught this, and, and it really pissed me off, Tom, because anytime there's a bus to back up over somebody, Melvin's driving it. And this is what he told Bridget Condit after the L.A. Chargers game. To tell you exactly what happened, I can't tell you because I don't know. Nah, no one mentioned anything to me with regards to his limited snap count. Gordon thought he could have helped the Broncos win, but he didn't get his opportunity. Quote, just waiting for my number to get called so I can go out there and help my teammates. It was a close game. I feel like I could have made a difference, but apparently not. End quote. So Melvin Gordon's out there popping off to the national media. In Mike Kliss's piece he dropped a couple hours ago, he's talking about how animated Melvin Gordon was in the locker room after that. That type of negativity, Tom, it, it's contagious. All right. And I've been saying it for two years. And I think maybe we saw just a hint of that with Jerry Judy on the sidelines. What do you make about the Jerry Judy, Melvin Gordon negative attitude, if that's what we're speculating, or at least the shot on the sideline? You, Scott, and I were all talking about it. Is it a bunch to do about nothing? Or do you have two negative Nellies with a contagious negative attitude? Well, first of all, have some self awareness. You got two guys that are you know sitting there. And I'll give some uh, props to Melvin Gordon. He didn't look like he was saying anything, he was listening to Judy. Maybe he was saying more, but there's two people that one has fumbled four times, cost a uh, game at least two, maybe two for sure. And then you got uh, Jerry Judy, who really has kind of been you know, non-existent this year. Yeah, he's had a couple decent games, but he's a first round choice. So you've got two people that lack any self-awareness whatsoever, bitching about whatever's going on with the team when they haven't contributed to the point where they have that right kind of thing. Like, really, I mean, it's, it is just 
I don't like, I'm unhappy, but I haven't done anything about it. And so that is concerning to me. The problem I feel like is Russell Wilson struggling. He's supposed to be the leader of the team. Who's the leader? Who's the real leader of this team? Justin Simmons has been gone for four day, uh, four weeks. So who's supposed to step up and say, I got to stop this attitude in its tracks. Nobody's doing it. Someone it should be over Russ. There. It should be it, Russ, the king of sure. the leaders, right? It should be Justin Absolutely. Simmons, the king of the leaders. And what are we seeing from Justin Simmons in that press conference? Defeat. He yeah. looked defeated, and I've never seen Justin Simmons look defeated before, Tom, but that's yeah. pretty much what it looks like. He looked exhausted. He looked worn out, and he, quite frankly, he probably is wondering, man, why did I sign that big deal be, <laughs> be here in Denver? And it sounds like we're piling on the Broncos. We are. They're a bad football team. They're joking the NFL. And to your point, Melvin Gordon, what pelts does Melvin Gordon have on the wall? Correct me if I'm wrong, but he was a first-round draft pick out of Wisconsin, number 15 overall. He's a two-time Pro Bowler. That is it for Melvin Gordon in the NFL. Uh, what, I believe 2016 and 2018 for the Pro Bowl. So, I uh, look, the Pro Bowl's a joke anyway. So, if you're looking at those honors, it is what it is. He had great talent coming out of Wisconsin, but his attitude is just so piss poor. And I'm so tired of hearing Melvin's a big back. He's a big physical back. We need him. He's six foot, what, six foot one, 207 pounds. Look at Latavius Murray. Six foot three, 230 pounds, running like a mad dog out there against the Chargers. And that man can't get the start against the Jets. How confusing is that for the Broncos offensive line, man? It just it's it pisses me off and there's no excuse for it. Naj coming in. What's up, Naj? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by MHI with Tom Scott and I saying, hey, brothers, today Wilson's press conference made me happy. He's taking tremendous fire. So many people criticizing him as a football player, leader, and person. I think this is changing him for the better, and he will respond. Tom, did you catch Russell Wilson at the at the mic today? Uh, I definitely agree with Naj. He's always upbeat, at least on these days, and uh, the post game obviously very upset. But one thing you can say about him, he's consistent, and he's consistently trying to be positive with his outlook, speaking into the microphone down at Dove Valley. Yeah, I, I caught a little bit, bit of that. And, you know, you, you do have to give him I – mean, I don't know if it's fake, I don't, but I, it seems genuine. He He's po he's a positive person. If you if he gets negative and starts to doubt everything, then, you know, you know it's going to be trickling down everywhere else. So – but whether it's genuine or not, that's the – that's what the teammates have to decide for themselves, right? I, yeah. you know, we don't know what's going on in that locker room. Do they think he's a genuine person? Because there's a lot of speculation that he's not. But if he, you know, yes, it's his job to lead and he needs to stay positive. It's just the way it is. And I guess I don't understand the speculation on why he's not and why it matters, quite frankly. I mean, it, look, don't meet your heroes, folks. Something we talk about all the time, especially Tom and I. Uh, look, these guys play a game for a living and they get paid lots of dollars to do it. Now, I'm not going to tell you who your heroes should be and who they shouldn't be, but I don't really care. OK, I'm, I'm looking for a winner. And right now I don't see one. The most basic of things, the most simple of reads are not there. I mean, we're talking day one quarterback type stuff. And no, I'm not a quarterback guru. I'm not going to try to recruit your high school son and pay and charge a million dollars and go on state sponsor and tell you I can fix every quarterback. I'm not going to do it. But the problem is Russell Wilson and this offense are not producing. So what's Nathaniel Hackett's answer? I'm going to name running back Melvin Gordon, the starter today. Um, just absolutely, to me, sends ripples throughout this locker room and a, a complete message. I mean, you're going to just send this complete lack of accountability, lack of any sort of responsibility. I mean, that's that's what we're looking at from the leader of this team. And George Payton is supposed to stand idly by and just watch this happen. I mean, what's George Payton supposed to do at this point, Tom? Well, there's really not much he can do. I mean, who, who are you going to, what are you going to do? I mean, if you fire Hackett right now, who's who's going to be your head coach? You, you've got a defense that's running well, and you're going to put more responsibility on the defensive coordinator. Are you going to bring Dom Capers down? What What is the end <laughs> game, right? Like, what can he do? Yeah, he could fire him if he wants to send a message. But at the same time, you know, <laughs> you've got a lot invested in a coach and a new quarterback trying to figure something out. So I, my guess is they're going to give him more time, 
But the problem I the the problem I have with it is we've been waiting with this give it more time, and here we are six games in, and there has been a tiny tiny bit of hope, and that's it. That was the first quarter of uh, Monday night's game, and that's it. I mean, really. So, I mean, I don't know what he's going to do, but I think Hackett, the pro, Hackett's good in one respect that he hired some good people, and a head coach needs to do that. But he, his leadership ability is falling short, and you can see it on the field. So, what Pey- what Peyton can do, I don't know. What is he going to do? He could hey, he could fire him and send a message to the team and say this is not acceptable. But then then what? And then what? That's what we're looking at right now. I am of the opinion that Nathaniel Hackett surrendered all authority and power to the players today by naming Melvin Gordon starting running back. No, there's no strategy in it because he's not a very good player. All right. He's not consistent. That's just calling it what it is. In six games, he's rushed the ball 55 times, 201 yards and one touchdown. He's averaging 3.7 yards a carry, four fumbles. Two of those were lost and he's got nine first downs total in the passing game, 11 receptions for 98 yards. I don't see that as started screaming, starting running back material, especially when I put on the film. This offensive line is struggling as they are with Butch Berry and this new scheme. And we could talk about his coaching personality and the things that we heard from good per source, if you will, out there at training camp this last year. Uh, it's just not working. And I think that he's completely surrendered authority and power of this team over to the players, specifically those with a bad attitude. And um, Melvin Gordon had a bad attitude. He was called into the principal's office, if you will, today and was given a reward for misbehaving in class. Um, yeah. Melvin Gordon said, quote, I knew there was going to be a conversation. You never know until something happens, but I knew there was going to be a conversation before anything happened. End quote. With regards to him and his speculation on whether or not he'd even be on the roster this week, Tom, uh, he said, quote, we hashed some things out him and Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, what do you have to hash out? Nathaniel Hackett needs to come down here and say, you need to start, stop airing all of our dirty laundry from the locker room into the microphones. You need to stop being selfish. He needs to humble Melvin Gordon. Everybody talks about Melvin Gordon, such a great player. Look what he's done in the league. I'm looking what he did in the league, folks. It ain't Jack squat two pro bowls. That is it in 2016 and 2018. This is a first round pick. And speaking of first round picks, Jerry Judy, if you want to attach yourself to this clown, Melvin Gordon, be my guest, because how long do we need to make, make it official for a first round pick to be a bust. I'm looking at two first rounders standing there with piss poor attitudes that can't seem to help their team and want to get on Twitter and bitch about it there. Well, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation if uh, Javante Williams didn't get hurt. I mean, so that damn yeah, Javante. I, it's unfortunate <laughs> because you know that he, he would have been the starter. Melvin Gordon would probably have not seen the field much at all. And that was probably the plan. And then, you know, he was lost for the season. I don't know what was said, and sometimes you know people can patch it up, but you're right. It isn't sending a great message. It's not sending a great message in two things. It's one, you got somebody that is, like Melvin Gordon who's saying something out, you know, airing dirty laundry, as you said. But two, you've got someone that's making mistakes, a lot of them, and then you're giving them another chance. And that, that, I mean, I get it. You got to give somebody another chance. But right now, it wasn't just one or two fumbles. It was four costly fumbles and you, you've got to take that person out and leave him out for a while I, I and to mean, your point real quick stop right there that's why he was out of the game the other night in the fourth quarter and latavius murray was in right there to your point he wonders why he wasn't in and it was blatantly clear nathaniel stick with your gut your gut told you you can't count on this guy when the chips are down then so what do you do you're gonna give him the starting role against the jets tom i don't see it I really don't see it. Yeah. I, I think it's a mistake to do it. Um, I don't know. Phil McLaughlin. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it. Coming in from Facebook. I get so Phil. pissed watching Russ send flowers and best wishes to his line. Brady Rogers, Manning, etc., would be in their faces. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough one, Tom. I mean, yep. uh, your namesake, right? Thomas Brady, uh, your namesake. <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things, man. Like, look, He's Tom Brady, so he can kind of do whatever he wants, and that's the way it is because he's a winner. 
but when you're not winning, you can't really do whatever you want. Russell Wilson is figuring that out right now. I asked the question last week to Nick, um, how many quarterbacks coaches does Russell Wilson need? He's got his private one there. Why is Clint Kubiak employed by this team if they're not going to use him? I mean, it's like they're talking about two completely different languages. Um, I think it would be, quote, fake or corny if Russ did yell at the offensive line because I don't think that's his style. But to Phil's point, who is going to grab this team by the throat and say enough? I mean, I'm hearing former Super Bowl 50 champions on the airwaves here in Denver and former players that have played on Super Bowl 48 that I know personally saying this wouldn't have flew. This wouldn't have flew with Peyton. This wouldn't have flew with anyone if Peyton even wasn't there. Uh, No one seems to really want to own up on this team. And I don't know if it's because Russell Wilson and Melvin Gordon are buddies from Wisconsin. And that's why we got to give Melvin the preferential treatment. I think that's the reason why he's here. I think that's the reason why he signed a one-year $2.5 million deal in the offseason. And no, other teams weren't fighting for Melvin Gordon, okay? You can believe whatever you want, state sponsor, whatever. They weren't fighting for Melvin Gordon. But it's just one of those things, man, where eventually there's got to be a little bit of consistency. But speaking of consistency, Broncos country, it's always important to have consistency in your life. And if you guys are like me, you're increasingly getting more concerned about cybercrime people stealing your private data and invading your privacy. Listen, guys, I'm not tech savvy at all. That's why I use NordVPN on all of my browsers, whether it's desktop, tablet, laptop, or phone. Now, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and NordVPN protects you as a one-stop shop for all things cybersecurity. It's incredibly easy for me to use, which means I don't have to be an MIT graduate to figure this stuff out, guys. With just one click, I'm protected. It's very intuitive to use. With my Nord VPN account, I can have up to six devices protected. I no longer have to worry about hackers, malicious sites, and pop-ups. For the price of a single cup of coffee per month, I have complete peace of mind knowing that my devices and my data are protected. Plus, with Nord VPN, I'm never a slave to media blackouts. I'm able to watch virtual lo- location to a mark to a market that's showing my specific NFL games that I want to watch. So I never miss out and I can watch the action live. Broncos country, grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash MHH to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com forward slash MHH to get four months for free. And speaking of free, I think the Jets are going to just tee off on Melvin Gordon. Freebies are going to be there. If you're Robert Sala, what's the one thing you're preaching at your defense this week, Tom? The one thing. The football. (laughs) Strip the football when 25 (laughs) is in because it is going to pop out. Uh, I saw some cute little tweets out there, and I retweeted it. One guy was like, I'm going to give away like a certain amount of cash if Melvin Gordon fumbles the night and someone retweets it. I was like, yeah, we retweeted it right here. I take the over, 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 hammer that over. Silent One coming in here with a very generous $25 super chat. Thank you guys so much. Your monetary support uh, helps us keep the lights on here at MHH, specifically here at MHI. Silent One saying, I have came to the unfortunate conclusion that Russ was – a system quarterback in Seattle. Now that he is out of that system, he has put on some pounds and aged. And we are seeing the negative results of that. Hawks fans have tried to tell us, "Oh, silent one, you kill me. You give me some. You give me some goosebumps there." What that Hawks fans have tried to tell us, because I never want to secede anything to them. I hate them forever for what happened in Super Bowl Forty Eight. Um, but something's not right with Russell Wilson. I don't know if. I want to go to one extreme saying that these injuries are just an excuse because he's playing poorly because I don't know. I don't know if the guy's hurt. I know that the guy's tough as nails. Say what you want about him. He's tough as nails and he doesn't like to miss time. He's not Jawan James just there for a paycheck, never going to get on the field. And yes, Jawan James, ladies and gentlemen, is still playing in the NFL. He (laughs) is shockingly not playing, if you will, for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, But Tom, what do you say about Silent One's comment here saying that Russell was a system quarterback and this system with Nathaniel Hackett it just doesn't work? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll first say that every great quarterback has a down year. It's They just do. So we may be seeing a down year from Russell Wilson, a lot of things coming together. So I will say that. But from what I can see is he's not being utilized how he was before. 
He, he's not on the move that often. He's not rolling out that often. Part of that has to do with they're not sticking to the run at all. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, they need – he is – seems like he's a round peg in a square hole right now. He's Literally, just, because some other people are saying that too. They're like, "Yo, my boy Russ looks a little thick these days," and <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna judge another man's figure or anything. But like, he's, you know, I've been next to him. You've been next to him. He's not, I'm gonna say, a little guy, no. but he's thick. He's a thick boy. I mean, so when you're like round peg, square hole, is there, is there some literal <laughs> sense in there, or uh, not quite? Yeah, no, I I didn't mean it that way. I just meant he, he, how they're playing right now is not fitting his style. And I've been I I have taken and I'm gonna write something up about this. I I took all the play by play information, downloaded it into Tableau. I don't want to bore anybody with the analytics side of it, but he is not doing well on everything except to the right. So he, he his completion percentage, everything to the left in the middle of the field like? is poor. He needs – so standing in the pocket and trying to throw to the left is not working. So mm-hmm. something that needs to change. <laughs> they need to move the pocket so he can see the field better, something, but it's not happening. So, oh. uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know about his, uh, you know, being in shape or not. He seems like he takes really good care of his body. Uh, I don't know, I mean, based on what he spends on it. But uh, it's just – the offense is just not right for him at the, the way it is. You know, and then you add in all the other uh, pieces, the offensive line not working well, running backs fumbling. I mean, it's it's going to it's going to knock you down a peg or two. So offensive line, we had a Billy Turner sighting or right? <laughs> I mean, we had a Billy Turner sighting. What's up Finally. with that? Well, yeah, we'll get to we'll get into some offensive line and Billy Turner here in just a second. My guy Lawrence Rivera is coming in. What's up, Larry? Hope you're doing well, brother. What's up, guys? Did Nathaniel Hackett miss an opportunity to play Melvin Gordon at this age in his career against his former team? No, no, no. He didn't miss an opportunity, Lawrence. I hear what you're trying to say. See, Lawrence is one of those Broncos fans that is actually knowledgeable, smart, and is trying to think with his head, unlike me right now, right? This analytics guy this trying to be objective i'm not objective at all this team is trash and i will continue to say that until i see otherwise today i officially left and jumped off the ship into the lifeboat things are going to get worse folks because i'm telling you this locker room is not going to stay together these fragmented sort of things with melvin gordon popping off and getting the start the next week i mean we haven't even seen an arrest yet this season Right. I mean, like, and it's Halloween, knock on wood, Broncos country. You know what that means. At least Vaughn's not in town, going to throw a sick party. So maybe we'll stay low on the arrest this year, but it's just tough. And Lawrence coming in, just following up saying, I also, I hate the fact how we are doing next to nothing to get better looks at the avalanche, switching up their whole lineups because it wasn't working there. And we are trying to force it. That's the conversation right now in the mile high city in the Rocky mountain region, folks. It's not the Broncos. And I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, 31 years old. I'm a, I'm a Colorado native. I played in the first state championship game in that stadium. The Broncos are playing in. Played for the voice of the Broncos, if you will, uh, as my head coach. And I have never seen the Broncos so out of touch with their fan base. I mean, the Avs are getting ready to go right now. They've, what, started? I think I saw an injury today. Uh, the Nuggets are getting ready to go. And you've got Stanley Cup champions on one side, and then you've got the MVP on the other. And people are wondering, why should I show up to a Broncos game again? I can't believe I'm saying that, Tom. I really can't. Yeah. Because they still, in the ratings and everything, dominate this landscape the denver broncos are an historic franchise make no mistake about it but these primetime games man these things these these faux pas these uh misses they're embarrassing and people are checking out well i'll just sorry to look on the bright side luke <laughs> <laughs> how dare you i know you're in your zone where you're like i'm, I'm really upset but you, you the thing of it is if somebody would have, and I've said this many times, if a player would have made a single play in that game on Monday, they could have won it. It was there for the taking and they didn't do it. And I'm going to say this. I have hated this trade from the beginning. And the one thing that I still have a bone to pick with George Payton, he traded away Vaughn Miller. And the reason why I hate it is he still had gas left in the tank. He's a primetime player. He makes plays when it's needed. 
and he was a good leader. And I know he was a goofball and he did, but he came around. He was a pretty good leader. Learn, learn from De, uh, DeMarcus Ware how to lead this team. But nobody stepped up. The only person that stepped up was Baron Browning, got that interception. But he can't do it all. You know, he, the, somebody else had to step up and nobody did. And and no. there's no Hall of Fame caliber player. I'm a, Pat Sertan is different. I think he may be at some point. He's still early, shutting down one side of the field. But who's who's there to step up and make that play when it matters most? He, what there isn't one there. It's not on the offense. Should be Russell Wilson. He's not doing it. Who on the defense? Baron Browning did it early in the game, and they should have won that game because of that turnover. They coughed yep. it up, pissed it away. Yep, I completely Fair. agree. Jake coming in real quick. Jake Klein saying, "Bro, the D looks fine. Von gone is not the issue." That's debatable. I mean, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, and then you see what Vaughn's doing. It's tough, but I, I also subscribe to the notion or philosophy that sometimes players, coaches, we as human beings need need a change of scenery. We need a change of employment. We need a change, sometimes drastically, sometimes not that dramatically. It all depends on those situations. Uh, Cristiano Roden coming in. Thank you so much for your generous support. Evening fan fam. It seems that Russell Wilson was expected to carry the offense, just like Peyton Manning. But he's not that guy. As a leader or a passer, must revert to moving the pocket. It's tough living here in Broncos country when you've got Super Bowl winning quarterbacks falling out of the sky every, what, seven to ten years pretty much? Like, <laughs> with these free agent or trades. You got to go through hell for a little while, and then you should be getting a good one. Broncos wonder if they got a bad apple in Russell Wilson. I'm not willing to go there. I'm not willing to say that Russ is dried up. But I like that last comment there saying we've got to move the pocket. You talked about it, Tom. It's time to do something different. And I think it needs to be dramatically different. And if you're willing to start Melvin Gordon, who let's just say it, he's a clown and he's a clown. He's a clown. The way he handles his business in the microphone, on the field, on the sideline, he's a clown. If you're going to allow that clown to be the starting running back for the Denver Broncos, why can't you allow Justin Outen to call offensive plays? Yeah. I, I, well, something needs to change. He, he needs to re, uh, give that responsibility up because it's not working. So he needs to make a change. He needs to be a little more self-aware. I thought he had that self-awareness when he realized his game management skills weren't very good. So he brought in somebody else to help him. He needs to do the same thing. He needs to delegate responsibility because he is not able to do it with whatever's going on. Christiana, uh, Cristiano, I'm going to jump on this. Russ is bad throwing to left, question mark. His most egregious misreads were to the right. Hamler for the win versus Colts. In the middle, Dulcich for first down and more on Monday. Well, the numbers say something different. His, uh, his pass completions to the left, in uh in the deep and even short throws are at least 5, 10 to 15 percentage points lower than the average in the NFL and his middle middle ground isn't that much better. So yeah, maybe he missed a read here and there to the right or in the middle, but when he does actually make the throw, it's pretty piss poor. So uh yes, to the left is he is struggling. His uh, percent completion percentage to the right is more nor is in his norm, 68% to the um, short and 61% to the uh, deep right. So, yes, he, he is struggling to the left for sure. The numbers say that. My guy Rodney Garcia coming in here. Perfect timing. I was just thinking about this. Hope you're doing well, Rodney. Thank you for joining Scott, Tom, and I here on MHI. Uh, how about a little more bootleg play calls? That would be nice, but Rodney, the problem with that is you would have to commit to running the football, and that's something that Nathaniel Hackett will not do. Tom talked about it earlier, and we're going to keep talking about it because this show is about how Melvin Gordon gets to do whatever the hell he wants, and he will be the starting running back against the New York Jets. That was uh, spoken into the microphone today down at UC Health Training Center. Uh, no, no play action, no rollouts, none of the stuff that Russ got so famous at doing in Seattle. I mean, hell, he won a Super Bowl. He's a nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback. Um, and look, you can say what you want about him. Walter Payton, man of the year. They don't just give those things away in the league. They give a lot away in the league, the Pro Bowl stuff and things like that, fines. They don't just give away the Walter Payton, man of the year. Um, yeah, I would love to see, and I saw it in the comment section. I was trying to grab it. Someone said, they need a Jake Plummer-style offense. And that's exactly it. Yeah. Now, I have never seen a right-handed quarterback be able to roll out to the left and throw across his body the way that Jake Plummer did. Something special. Pat, Pat Mahomes, 
sure. Josh Allen, I'll surrender to that. But LA, all right. <laughs> Still, I mean, like it was special with the snake, man. And here's another thing I want to clear up too, like these missed reads. Anyone could press pause when you're watching film. For those of you that do watch film, I commend you. For those of you that share memes, I also commend you because it's hilarious and I do it too. But anyone could press pause and say, look, that guy's wide open. It's not that easy, folks. If it were that easy, Drew Locke would still be here. And hell, he would have a ton of completions to both the left and the right. Um, I get it. There are some elementary aspects, and that's the point being driven home by a lot of these pictures. The elementary aspects of Russell Wilson's game isn't there right now. But I do feel like we are trying to jam that that round peg into the square hole like you talked about earlier because I think the plan all along, like I had reported last January when I was at the Shrine game in Vegas talking to very reputable sources in the know, Aaron Rodgers was supposed to be on his way to Denver. I think we've got the Aaron Rodgers system but Russell Wilson, the quarterback, and that's why you're seeing this atrocious atrocity that's called an offense. Yeah, and and they don't really have to overhaul the entire offense, right? They have the principles in there. They've got West Coast principles, which we saw Mike Shanahan run in Denver, got the wide zone, which we saw him run in Denver. They just need to tweak it a little, right? They have the principles down. They just need to add a little bit of the, what everybody's talking about, a little tweak here and there, rollouts, moving the pocket, something else has to be tweaked in that offense. It doesn't need to be complete overhaul like they did for Tim Tebow back in 2011, right? It just needs to change a little. But they're right. un- unwilling to do it is the problem. That's the problem. He's unwilling to change because he, he, we have not seen it once. So people that call Russell Wilson selfish, I'm actually looking at it maybe with a different theory. What if you let, instead of letting Melvin do whatever Melvin wants, what if you let Russ do what he wants? There's a novel concept. Tailor your offense to your quarterback. I mean, you're willing to do it for a running back that's not going to be here next year, could give a hoot about this team. He's out there liking tweets, suggesting that he should get traded from Broncos country, who has never embraced him, and he just can't figure out why. He's never been embraced by Broncos country. Let me remind you why. Spring of 2020, two-year, $16 million contract. Hello, that's a lot of money for a running back, especially one from the AFC West, where, again, you don't see a lot of those pelts on the wall. And Broncos country, remember a guy named Philip Lindsay? You had him, too, as an undrafted free agent. You had him, and that pissed Melvin off, and he was worried about whether or not who who would be the starter coming in. Uh, Training camp 2020, the competition for RB1, right? Well, Fast forward just two months later, October 14th, 2020, Melvin Gordon was arrested for DUI in Denver. I uh, ultimately posted a $55,000 cash bond and charges were later dismissed that January of 2021 for the DUI. Melvin Gordon pled guilty to speeding and reckless driving. And then in the 2021 season, Melvin Gordon be- begrudgingly split the carries with Javante Williams didn't show the rookie that much love until he ultimately had to. And then he came crawling back to Denver for a one year, $2.5 million deal. Now I know that's kind of the synopsis and it's, it's a, what have you done for me lately league? But man, I, I talk about this guy running over his teammates with the bus, backing up his teammates with the, with the bus drew lock. No, no love lost there for me. Again, I had a first round grade on him. I'll say it in the microphone over and over and it, it ain't it. But if you remember, Tom, last year in the offseason, Melvin Gordon was on a podcast and he was asked about Drew Locke and he's saying, you got to fake it till you make it, bro. That's your starting quarterback, man. And and you're you're rolling over a guy like that. You're, and, you know, now I'm wondering if he does get traded, is he going to go on Richard Sherman's podcast and start talking all this crap about Russell Wilson? Sure. I mean, you've just got a selfish, arrogant, negative attitude that is contagious in this locker room full of a bunch of young, immature guys, in my opinion. K.J. Hamler, I don't know him. I'm not going to call him a clown or anything because he's not out there getting arrested. He's not out there throwing his teammates under the bus. But him throwing his helmet around the other day, no, nah, man, you're better than that. You come from a good family. I know you come from a good family because I've done a lot of scouting on you. And I know that your mom and dad were not happy about that. So I'll give KJ a pass on that. Jerry Judy, we've seen a lot of immature things. Alberto, we're just kind of waiting. I'm not sure if he's ever going to mature. But I think you got so many young pups on this team that th- this negative attitude could be transitioned over to them. And if we're going to be honest, Melvin Gordon is that old, mature, immature 30-year-old. Okay, he's the old guy that's immature and can't grow up. Eventually, those guys are discarded because you're either an asset or you're a liability. 
Well, and you hit the nail on the head there. You've got a lot of immature players that are now dominating the locker room, it seems. Who is the one that's going to step in and say enough is enough? You know, but that that's what I keep saying. There's not a leader on the team that's willing to step up and say that and bring this thing together, right? I don't know who it's going to be, but somebody has to, and it needs to be a, a, one of the stars. They need to they they, they need to stop with because the coach isn't doing it. I mean, if this kind of stuff, and I, I hate to say it because you know I'm I hate the Patriots, and you know this would not fly in Bill Belichick's uh, regime. He would yeah. he would have benched Melvin Gordon <laughs> after the first fumble, probably, maybe even yeah he would have been on the you know on the bench. It, it you know and I there's issues with the, with the way he does things obviously, but somebody has to step up and take control of this locker room. Somebody who is a leader and I haven't seen it yet. And I like Justin Simmons, but he's, you know, like I said, he was gone for four weeks on injured reserve. He's just coming back and you can tell he wasn't his old self. So who, who is that going to be? I can't point to anybody. It needs to be an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman. If we're going to be honest. All right. Those, those guys or a linebacker, those are the dogs. You need a dog and it needs to come from a dog. And I don't know how many dogs we have. And Lawrence Rivera, he hit the comment. He hit this comment on the head and and he was kind of referring back to what you were talking a little bit about giving up Von Miller. And Lawrence said, look, that completely crushed the fan base, completely crushed the fan base. You might argue is still crushing the fan base because you're seeing what Von Miller is doing out there on his way to definitely another postseason with the Buffalo Bills, potentially another Super Bowl. I mean, good Lord, if that man gets three rings. That's that feels tough. And then, you know, Lawrence also I mentioned Philip Lindsay and he's like, look, that was tough and gutting for Broncos country. Also, not as much as a Hall of Famer like Von Miller. But I get your point. Philip Lindsay might have been a little arrogant here and there might have, you know, had a had a loud bark, but definitely celebrated and beloved here in Broncos country. And he always will be. He'll always have his his place. But um, when you compare him to Von Miller, man, there's there's really nothing more you can say. The defense, the Broncos defense has been carrying them. I mean, you look yep. at the statistics and they look great. And then you look at the Broncos offense and it looks putrid. What I would love to see, but you're not going to see, is more of Latavius Murray this next week against the Jets. Without committing to the run, this Jets team is going to slap the Broncos offense right around. Um, Latavius Murray the other night, Tom, as you know, 15 rushes for 66 yards. The man had two first downs, a long rush <laughs> of 14 yards. I'll take it. It might sound pathetic, a long rush of 14 yards. I will take it. Those are sometimes referred to as explosive plays because it was over 10 plus yards, as you know. But this whole Melvin Gordon's a bigger back and and he's physical and he gets it. No, he's not. Latavius Murray is literally bigger. He's 32 years old. Melvin Gordon's 29. And Latavius Murray has some pelts on the wall. This is a man that was drafted by the Raiders in the sixth round, not a first round pick like Melvin Gordon. Spent some time with the Vikings, the Saints, the Ravens, and the Broncos. Um, Man, here he is. Week, week, what's it going to be? Week two? Week three for for Latavius. Technically, yeah, week right? Week two, week, week three, three, yeah. But London, I, he came over from the London game. So, right. look, running back is running back, man. And I thought he could have started the other night, if I'm gonna be honest. But Latavius Murray, I don't know why he's here. You're not gonna use him. You've committed to Melvin Gordon. Well, I, I mean, just the running game in general. I mean, if you're gonna, if you bench Melvin Gordon because you're afraid he was gonna fumble, give the ball to Latavius Murray. Start running the ball. It doesn't matter if you're super successful. You've got to run the ball to generate the things that will help Russell Wilson be a better quarterback. It's just it's just the way it is. I mean, but not committing to it at all. You could tell that the San Diego Chargers were just teeing off, knew it was going to be a pass almost every play, and they were teeing off on him. And it wasn't until they were really effective at the end of the game when they weren't, you know, when the running wasn't that big of a deal that they let him actually run a little bit. So... I'm with you, man. I don't think that I don't think they should be giving Melvin Gordon any carries at all. <laughs> Alessandro, Alessandro coming in, looking maybe at a different aspect, a different side of the story. I don't know. Have you ever seen Dr. Phil? 
Tom. I will totally admit <laughs> it. If I want to watch trash TV, I'm watching a Dr. Phil. Like straight <laughs> up, no no embarrassment, even though I should be. And that man always says, uh, uh, every story is like a pancake. It's got two sides to it. Well, Alessandro might be coming in with some Dr. Phil. And he's saying, I already told you that Melvin can take a beating. Don't be surprised if he shows up Sunday. Um, also saying he feels a little sorry for the dude. Why? Why do you feel sorry for this man? This man has made a hole. He has made a bed. And now he has to lay in it. And you know what? Maybe Nathaniel Hackett's given up power to the team. Or maybe here's a, here's conspiracy theory. You ready? Get those tinfoil hats on. Cue the UFO music. All of it. Maybe he's punishing Melvin Gordon by giving him the start and saying, you know what? All right. I'm going to take a page out of Lovey Smith's book. And I'm going to say, you're getting 20 carries in a row. Don't fumble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe that's what the doctor ordered. Maybe he's right. <laughs> Just give him the rock and let him run. And maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll come out, you know, with his ego and be like, see, I told you. <laughs> you never <laughs> know. Laughlin coming in again. What's up, man? Appreciate all your support. Phil saying Billy Turner is new in here, uh, but he is a vet. Maybe he can get mad and stand up and say something. And Phil, if you remember... Way back when, Billy Turner was actually like homegrown. He was a homegrown Bronco, if you will. No, he's not from Denver or anything like that. Uh, but he was originally with the Broncos before he went and made a whole lot of money up in Green Bay and came back to Denver. Now, it was nice seeing Billy Turner out there. I was shocked that I saw him and I recognized him by those dreads, the bl kind of blonde ends of the dreads, because his number, I think he was wearing 57 or 59 or something like that. I'm like, that's yes. not Billy Turner's number. Um, still kind of getting used to all those sorts of things. What about the offensive line? Um, I saw some decent pass protection sets from Billy Turner, and I was actually really surprised that I saw him considering how much ring rust if you will, uh, he should have as a fighter on in those trenches. And I was actually encouraged watching Billy Turner a little bit. Now that left side and the rest of the offensive line is not getting the job done. What, what happened to Calvin Anderson though? I mean, I know he was kind of struggling, but they, they just took him out and put, and they flopped uh, Fleming over to the other side. I, I mean, maybe it was necessary. Maybe he was just getting beat. And he, we just didn't see it get, you know, coming out. But when you're down there on the field and you're closer, you're like, you know, that Anderson's just going to get beat really bad here pretty soon. So they got scared and took him out. But I mean, that kind of, that's going to mess with the uh, continuity of the line uh, a little bit. I like, I think Fleming's played pretty well for who he yeah. is. So, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, un I mean, I don't not understand it. But, you know, that that really can affect the line. Swapping him over to the left side, they're already struggling. You got Reisner new with Fleming being new over there next to him. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a struggle. Uh, but, again, I think they're trying to figure it out on the offensive line. I really think they need to do something with Cushenberry. I, I think they, you know, they can pull him, maybe get Glasgow. I know Glasgow has not been an incredible player for the Broncos this season. But he can't be worse than Cushenberry, I don't think. I maybe I'm wrong, but Cushenberry has been very bad. Yeah, Cush is. Yeah, I know it's tough. Cush has been tough. Fly, flying anger pick. I love. I love that. I love that picture too. Cush is a liability. I'm always talking about that man. Assets are liability, and there's so many liabilities on this offensive line right now. It's it's really tough and. If we're kind of wrapping up sort of the Wednesday, if you will, there was a Broncos presser today. Again, head coach Nathaniel Hackett, news of the day, announced Melvin Gordon, the starting running back. Now, the question was, is running back Latavius Murray going to start on Sunday? To which Nathaniel Hackett said, quote, no, Melvin will start. So, I mean, it's almost like the Denver media were ex was expecting Latavius to get this start. The time is up with Melvin and Hackett, for whatever reason, is staying loyal to this man. I don't I don't know. Maybe Gordon's got something on Hackett. Everybody talking about Snyder having stuff on people. I don't know what Gordon <laughs> has on the Broncos because he can do whatever he wants. Obviously, the injury report for the Broncos is really, really tough. People got all eyes on Russell Wilson, not just for his poor performance, but he's banged up. Uh, they were asked about if Russell Wilson is going to be playing with the starting offense on Sunday. Quote Nathaniel Hackett, yes, of course. With him, he's a very tough competitor. He's going to do every single thing that he can do to possibly be able to get out on that field. Uh, Brett Rippon is going to be getting a few first-team reps this week, if you will. And uh, away you go for the Broncos starting running back. 
Melvin Gordon and a banged up quarterback, Russell Wilson, dealing with a hamstring issue, had an MRI, I believe, and then shoulder issue from a couple weeks ago in that Raiders game. Things just aren't getting any easier because you're getting ready to see a New York Jets team that if you want to call them anything, that defense, I mean, Sauce Gardner, dude, it just... I mean, PS2 is the man. Sauce Gardner is the man, too. And just maybe a level, just a level down from PS2. But this defense is physical for the Jets. They are physical. If Russ does not get any sort of protection, you might be looking at Russ getting knocked out of this game. Well, and that's that's the whole thing. Start running the ball behind Miners and Turner and see what happens. You know, make them stop it. I, I, it's just, it, it boggles my mind that they get too fancy at times. Just put it between your two best offensive linemen and see if they can stop it. Just pound the rock with Latavius Murray. That will help Russell Wilson, right? It'll help the whole team, but at least try something different. I mean, go for it. What he's what he's been doing isn't working, so I, you're going to help that team out a heck of a lot if you just try to run behind your best two defenders or two offensive linemen. That would be nice. I mean, the Baltimore Ravens have some behemoth named Ricard who's out there at like seven foot three, 600 pounds as a fullback. And he's blowing fools up on the line. I mean, it could be a linebacker, could be a DB. And they put that man in the backfield, not only because they have a running quarterback in Lamar Jackson, but because they're committed to running the football. They don't see that as a wasted liability on their roster spot. That man is another blocker. You know what's going to happen when he's in the game. I mean, it's straight ahead power football and you're seeing it here in the comment section. I mean, if we're being honest, football is we make it way more complex than it needs to be. We really do. It's a child's game. Uh, It's not that hard to follow once you get used to it, just like anything else, familiarity and consistency. But man. This is bad. It's a bad product. You had fans leaving in overtime on primetime uh, a week or two ago, a week ago. Now you've got another primetime loss. Um, I, I'm starting to worry about the no-shows, Tom. I really am. Because yeah. Broncos country is starting to say, look, I got better things to do with my Sunday. I got to go get my kid a costume for Halloween. They may or may not be on fall break. Some people are hunting right now. I know I'm a hunter. It's hunting season. Uh, beautiful last minute travels for people lots of people love to travel in the fall go see the colors especially all over broncos country but the fan base how did the denver broncos get their fans to come to these games and support them well not with how they're playing that's for sure people are fed (laughs) up (laughs) you know i mean they need they need flesh a pound of flesh i think is the only answer and that pound of flesh has to be a a firing of somebody i i don't know if it would be like a no-name obscure guy or what but i I just don't know tom yeah i i don't have an answer for you i mean people have been fans of the broncos for a long time but when i was there (laughs) when i was there in uh, uh for the 49ers game there were a lot of 49ers fans there already and this was you know this was the third week in the season right and so now yeah. you've got poor play and you've got people leaving in overtime and i would have left too probably wouldn't because I, I i watched till the end but i knew they were going to lose that game people were just leaving oh. they, it, they was the writing was on the wall they're like they're going to lose this game i could tell and uh yeah i don't know what to do but something has to be changed and i think it has to start with a couple just a couple small tweaks to the offense try something different see if you can get something else going and go from there i mean that's you can't just keep doing the exact same thing i know that they want to they want to try and keep doing it till it works but this is week six it's not working i don't know i mm. I, I have no answers i mean i think the new ownership's you got their hands full with this one. Like how are we going to get more butts in the seat? Well, you got to win. That's how you do it. You need some Walmart rollbacks or, you know, some, <laughs> something to give these people start giving away some, some orange vests or towels or and get ready. All that stuff is coming because the one thing the Broncos are very good at their PR is second to none in the NFL. Um, you know what? I know it. We deal with these folks. They're absolutely great. Constant consummate professionals, but 
get ready to see those little things to try to get some fans here. You know, the Super Bowl run, it was United and Orange. These giveaways, these sort of meet and greets, these sorts of things, it, it's really, really tough. And uh, Michaela coming in real quick saying, the thing is, we won't see the changes. I don't believe we'll see any changes. And I think you're exactly right. I think new ownership, first year for everything. And I think George Payton will probably chalk this up to um, – change and getting used to things and new scenery and just a, a bum first year, if you will. Um, but I got to tell you, Thomas, if the manner in which they lose these games matters and it matters a lot, especially when it affects the Broncos bottom line and the man that is advising the Walton Penner group has cared about this Broncos bottom line may not have been the business of football, but he's cared about the bottom line, Joe Ellis, for his entire tenure here in Broncos country. And he's telling the Walton Penners right now, look, these fans are pissed. They've had enough. Uh, sooner or later, they're going to be demanding you guys do something. So George Payton has definitely got his hands full. We're going to have to see what happens with the Jets. Um, I'll give my official prediction. I know you're going to wait till Friday to give yours because you'll be hosting, of course, Legends of Mile High. Um, but I'm going to go 24-13 Jets. This Jets team is disciplined. They have plenty of improving to do. Zach Wilson has not arrived. I want to say that again. Zach Wilson has not arrived but he can have a coming out party against this defense. Why? Not because the defense is horrible, not because they're incompetent, not because they're poorly coached by defensive coordinator Ezero Evero, but because this locker room is going to splinter. The defense is sick of carrying the offense's water. That's been the message since 2015. And players, heck, if they're drafted in here, you should just know that should come with it on the intro packet and you're getting oriented to being a Denver Bronco. If you're on defense, get ready to do twice the work because that's all that's going to happen. Well, let, let's just hope that they don't. I mean, the defense could have some pride and not give up on the offense. We saw in 2015 the defense carried them to a Super Bowl. That offense was not very good. And I'm not saying they're going to carry them to a Super Bowl, but – well, they were winning back then, but if the the defense <laughs> way back when, yeah, if the defense can stick it out for a couple more games, may you know, I, I don't know. It's like I don't want them to give up, and I guess I'm trying to be too positive because I've seen it before where the defense finally just says, "You know what, I'm it's done," good. but and then they get rolled, and you see these huge leads. But, you know, they've got some pride, and they're looking at the stats. They're looking at what they're doing. You can't deny that they don't know that they're the top three defense in the league and they're not going to want to, you know, give up that mantle, so to speak. So maybe they'll stick it out for a little bit longer. We'll see. I, I don't know. I don't know what my prediction is right now I, I, about the uh, Jets versus the Broncos. My problem has been I have been hopeful too long on these Broncos and I've been too positive and I've been given the benefit of the doubt and I end up getting uh, getting a lost column in our uh, weekly mile oh, <laughs> round dude. tables. Me too, man. I think I might have the official, like the worst record. Last year I was kicking tail, and I, I think KB beat me. But, uh, yeah, man, and my, my pick them is just awful. But the thing is, I'm officially off the ship just because – I just see the inmates running the asylum, so to speak. The classroom children are running the teacher's room. There's a substitute teacher in, and that sub is a fun substitute. His name's Nathaniel Hackett. Um, you know, that's that's where we're at. I think he surrendered all authority over to Melvin Gordon. He's a player's coach. And player's coaches, that term, everybody likes it because who doesn't want a player's coach? But for crying out loud, there needs to be some discipline. And Michaela coming in here saying, you know some guy by the name of Hall for the New York Jets? Have you ever heard that name, Thomas? I heard of him. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. If you haven't heard of him, Broncos country, go look him up. I don't want to spoil anything for Sunday. Maybe if he's available, I don't know why he would be on fantasy. Pick him up immediately. This is a man that could probably be offensive rookie of the year. I mean, like yeah. going and watching some of his film. I mean, it's it's insane. The Jets have a lot of really good players. They have been building for a long time. But you know what they have? They have a coaching staff, and the coaching staff is committed to discipline. That's who Robert Sala is. And you're not going to see what was it the other night? 120, 130 yards in penalties, something like that. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely coming from the coaches, but there are players that have been around with different coaches that know better. 
why why are they doing why are they making these boneheaded penalties and these guys are professionals like it's time for them to step up it's time for the players to step up and be professionals and do their job regardless of what whether the head coach can't do it or not and this is their livelihoods step up and make a play step up and do something you're going to have to do it and I, i'm i'm waiting for Draymond Jones to be that leader he's i haven't seen it when's he going to step up i've been wait we've been waiting for for him every year. He's his breakout year. Thank I haven't you. seen it. Thank haven't you. Seen it. A little louder for Nick Kendall on the mountain trails, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, because no, that's just it. Y'all thought we forgot about Dre. No, man, we've been waiting for Dre to show up, but waiting yep. for these guys who are dogs. And then you've got the real hard workers, Josie Jewell, these kind of cats out with injuries. I get it. There's an ACL bug going around. No, it's not Lauren Landau's fault. This is what happens when football players don't play period uh you know it's it's just one of those things and right now the broncos have a really bad football team oh our good producer up here saying some guy named hall you know you might want to remember the name Brees hall 10th in the nfl in total yards as a rookie for the new york jets folks and uh man jets faithful i think are going to come out to this game guy yeah. is that what they call themselves what do they call themselves over there in new york in new jersey i'm not know. sure I'm not, not sure, sure either, but one thing I'll tell you real quick on the way out, the Jets media, man, are relentless. All right. Sometimes people think that we ask inappropriate questions because they might be a hard question or something like that on a presser or uh, we come off as jerks with loaded questions. You should hear some of these pressers from the Jets and, and this staff, man, like the East Coast teams have to deal with absolute savages yeah. from the media, man, in terms of asking the hard, nasty, tough questions. You're in Broncos country, Broncos land, if you're John Elway. Uh, we ask puppy dog questions and keep everything going just so we can keep our access. Guys, this has been one hour of MHI. Thomas Hall is joining me. Um, Scott on the ones and twos. Thank you so much, Tom. You can listen to Tom on Friday morning for the Legends of Mile High podcast. And you can reach Tom on Twitter at Thomas Hall NFL. If you'd like to reach out to Scott at Scout Kennedy, I believe you'll be seeing him in the morning relatively soon for Broncos for breakfast. And uh, yeah, man, I, I think things got to get worse before they get better. So Broncos country, buckle up, baby. It's going to be a long, rough ride. Yeah, well, thank you for having me on. I haven't jumped ship just yet, but uh, I've been I've been at this too long, so I'm going to keep holding you're, on. But you're holding I, on I to really the rum barrels on What's the ship. That? You're holding. You're the pirate holding on to the rum barrels on the ship, saying, "I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. This is going to turn around. It might turn around if you open that barrel." Uh, look, Broncos country, we gotta we gotta stay together. We gotta get through this. We're gonna get through this the rest of the season. Don't know what it's going to look like, but things have to get worse before they get better. Just weren't expecting that with a new ownership group, a new head coach, and quarterback named Russell Wilson. I'm Luke Patterson. He's Thomas Hall. Be sure to get at the mothership on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you gave our Twitter a follow as well. That's at MHI underscore pod. We thank you for joining the Mile High Insiders. If you want to get your swag on, grab yourself a hat or anything, huddleuppod.com. Holidays are coming up. Be sure to get some gear. Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave us a review. And uh, if you do that, you enter automatically to earn some free swag. Had one of our guys reach out to me just this last week for some swag. We're going to make sure it gets a hat or a shirt. Give us a like on Facebook and YouTube, wherever you guys are listening. We really, really appreciate it. Again, monetary donations are always welcome and appreciated, but your time is the most valuable thing. And to have a few hundred eyes on us tonight on a Wednesday night when Broncos country has got pitchforks and lanterns, it's always humbling. For Scott, he's Tom. I'm Luke saying, let's ride. Ha, 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 ha.